Do we want to talk about these comments we're getting? Yeah, they which were crazy, crazy stuff. Like the last thing. Bad? Oh, dude, the last one, there's somebody in there. We work for Soros. We're anti-Trump. We work for Soros. Uh, go look up the Bilderbergs. I'm like, yeah, okay, good. And the yeah. funny part is two or three lines down, we're, they're, they think we're Trump's biggest supporter and we're on his payroll. So we're doing a good job of being unbiased, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we should bring that up. In, in oh, we, we will. Yeah, we should today and say, you know, yep. Well, I'll say, I'll say our usual thing, you know, hey, it's, you know, it comes to see him. And Greg, I'll say, you got anything, and you guys got anything to say. And then Greg, let's just get that in discussion. Hey, guys, we, we, as a matter of fact, we avoid things that we know we're consciously really biased of. All right, here we go. Hi, I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst. I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. I'm also a keynote speaker and a trial consultant. And Greg and I have a course called BodyLanguageTactics.com if you want to learn a little bit more about body language. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase? Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I'm a body language expert and behavioral expert. I teach influence and persuasion, did 20 years in the U.S. military, and wrote the number one best-selling book on behavior profiling and influence, The Ellipsis Manual. Great. Greg? I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written a few books on body language and behavior. I have a, bus a business book called The Most Dangerous Business Book You'll Ever Read, and a really my best book, a book called How to Spot a Liar. I mostly spend my time today in corporate America and Wall Street. Excellent. Well, today what we're going to be talking about is Joe Biden. And we've been uh, baselining some politicians. Uh, President Trump is the one we did last time. And this time we're going to do Joe Biden. It's from an interview you did in 2016 with Gloria, I can't remember her last name. What was it? Uh, Borger. Borger. Yeah, Gloria Borger. And so we're just going to take a look at his body language and, and talk about what he looks like when there's nothing heated happening, nothing big going on. And as we go through this, it's important to remember that we're not politically, we're not on one side or the other side. None of us are. It, we're apolitical when we do this. We call them like we see them. If we see something that, that looks like uh, deception, we'll say, oh, this looks deceptive here, here, and here, and here's why. If we see something that looks truthful, we'll say, this looks truthful here, here, and here, and here's why. So that's what we're doing. So and don't, don't think that we're for one person or for another person. That's not what we do. Greg, you had something to say about that as yeah, well. Yeah, a couple of things. Number one, we're here to get a baseline. And what we want you to have the ability to do is to read the person when they're talking. There are a handful of things I want you to think about. If you're coming to the four of us to ask for voting advice, shame on you. I mean, we're good behavior experts and people experts. We're not political analysts. It's not how we're wired. We really go out of our way to be as unbiased as is humanly possible. So we want you to know that. The other piece, I had a good conversation with a friend today, and he asked me, can you tell whether they're lying or telling the truth about their campaign promises they're moving forward. I said, nobody can tell that because it's a campaign promise. Even if they have all the intent in the world of doing it, the next thing you know, things change because reality is not their dream. They're not emperors. No matter if some of them want to be or not, they're not emperors. They can't get away with whatever they want. So we're not going to tell you who to vote for. We don't want to try to influence that. We want you to have the ability to watch people when they're talking and see the difference in their body language based on stimulus. Mark, do you have something? No, not at all. Uh, well, other, other than, you know, we do see comments every now and again saying, hey, you're on the payroll of this organization or that person or this, you know, international cabal. Please, could they send the money? Because I haven't seen any of it yet. If they send enough, we'll stop. I'll take mine in Chick-fil-A cards or in Starbucks gift cards. So, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that's the part that wigs me out. Everybody thinks we're on the payroll for something. All right, so we got that part done. So what we'll do now is we'll go through and we'll look at that four or five little clips of Joe Biden and we'll tell you what we're saying so it can help you baseline his behavior for the upcoming uh, debates with President Trump. Here we go. Let me ask you this then. Uh, Bernie Sanders, Senator Sanders, has a history on this. He, he has in the past voted uh, to protect gun manufacturers from liability. Uh, is this a shot across the bow at, at Bernie Sanders? Well, Bernie Sanders has said that he thought the president's approach is a correct approach. Bernie Sanders said that he thinks there should be liability now. Well, and so he said he's re he might reconsider yeah, his position. Okay. But he, look, um, one of the purposes the president has, and I have, we want to affect the attitude of the nominees. 
We've worked too hard the last seven years to uh, take the party to a place in the country, the place we th think it should be. And so uh, what, uh, what little influence I may have and he may have on who the nominee is and what the nominee says, we're not going to be ashamed. So does Bernie... So, Greg, you want to go first? Sure. I don't have a whole lot on this one. There are a handful of things to watch for. Biden has a very specific thing. Remember, he's been in public life since 29, and this is the peak, as far as he knows, at that moment of his career. He's been vice president for this is the end of it. This is a five-year-old video, and he's engaging Gloria. His face, you'll see his brow rise when he's starting to make comments. That doesn't mean he's lying. It means he's looking for that approval back or as Ekman would call it, fishing for resonance. He's looking for resonance, making sure he has connection with her. He breaks a smile. That's patented for Joe. I mean, that is what he does. As people call him Uncle Joe or whatever. That smile is his engagement strategy. You see him moving his hand. You'll also hear one of his anchor words that he uses constantly. He, is, he says, now look. Look is, means nothing for him except for a filler word, and he's using it. But also watch his adapter. Remember what adapters are as a way to adapt to your environment. Take control and you are rubbing or releasing nervous energy to, to be comfortable. He has his hands together and he's adapting. And so he has a barrier and an adapter. And I refer to that as sacred space. It's a way to take control of your space and then make yourself comfortable. As you watch him talk to her, you can hear his lilt as he's asking for approval. Da -da, da -da. It's asking as he goes to the end. This is not negative or positive. That's his normal. He's been in public life a long time and he has lots of subroutines that he uses. Chase. So we see a good example here of where his visual home is during some of these normal questions. And he looks down into his right most of the time. And this goes back probably 25 years, some of the videos that we've watched. His visual home would be down in this direction, look down this way. We also see Gloria doing two major, major mistakes if you're interviewing somebody. Number one, she's extremely permissive. Number two, she's asking tons of leading questions that start with the word so. So she'll sum it up and then put a completely different idea in there and say, so this, which is a, a horrible idea for an interview. Maybe ask somebody to clarify. And we'll see some other mistakes she makes. Uh, I've never seen anyone interrupt someone during an interview as much as she has during this interview, which is awful. Uh, we also see a simple... Uh, right-sided shoulder shrug when he says he is sharing the same views with the current president, who's uh, Obama at the time. And we see a lot of digital flexion at the end when he's saying, we want to have influence over, over the nominees. So we see his hands squeeze up just a little bit. So we're just getting a, a sense of what his baseline is. Maybe he does that all the time. Maybe he doesn't. I'll give you the answer here. He actually doesn't do that very often. He does it when he's under a lot of stress. We see those fingers squeeze in into the hand, and he's also doing the adaptive gestures that uh, Greg talked about. Scott? Well, here's what I got. I'm, and take this for what it's worth, see what you guys think about it. It may sound crazy. I think we're seeing the hallmarks of, uh, of someone imitating an alpha. I mean, he's being still. He's doing all the things you're supposed to do. Whether he's been coached to do that or not, I think he's old enough to be in this a long time. But I think having been around Obama, do you might see that? Thing where he and Obama are talking with themselves. Obama comes in and just owns that room. He comes down, sits down, it's like bang. And it's, I couldn't, as it, we got to talk about that as well, maybe sometime, because it was unbelievable how this cat just like laid into it. And you were like, holy smokes, man. He's totally in charge. And I think, I think that's what's happening here is Biden has seen that enough times where he's trying to, to imitate that. Not, not that it's bad. I'm just saying that's what, that's what we're seeing him trying to imitate imitate the alpha and then Scott, uh, I, I mean the thing to point out here when you're talking about an alpha is if there's an alpha in an organization where there's a business an army special forces team any any team the other people are going to emulate that body that body language because it's a behavior pattern that gets recognition and positive reinforcement and so of course I, I think it's important to say that because you can tell when people have been in a cloistered environment you can pick up the body language of the alpha on everyone around them I think it's a good yeah. I, I've seen that. That's why I'm saying it. I just can't, I can't call him on it because I don't see the, we're seeing the hallmarks of alpha behavior, but we're not seeing the alpha in there. I don't know how to explain right. it, but that's, that's why I think it's been imitated. And Chase, I think when that half shred comes up, he's 
repeating what he's heard Obama say, and he wants to be part of that, like we're saying this, which is fine. That's what he's supposed to completely back him up. That's Vice what, that's what VP, yeah. VP does. Uh, and he's calm and guarded. And, um, I, and again, we see the hand, Greg, you, you covered his adapters there, but he gives that confirmation smile when he, when he starts talking to her and smiles so big that like, you agree with me, right? That thing. So that's kind of, it's not manipulative, but it's one of those things that, that helps her stay quiet because she will not stop it, man. I mean, it's, it's, she's this close to being rude. I, to me, it's, it's the, one of the worst kinds of, of, of interviews. You see that one where it's all one person and they're all that, you know, the, the one shot of just the person asking the question and then when the person's already answering the question, they cut back to the person. We miss everything. This is the other kind where they just won't let him answer the question. He's right in the middle of some of these things and she butts right in. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I would say in this interview, the interviewer is trying to double bind him up, get him in a bit of a position. So in terms of looking at the baseline, we, we do see these, these adapters here and here, which I would say are self-soothing gestures. So we've got to decide, is this uh, normal behavior for him, given that he's had a million and one interviews, or is this pressure on him? Let's just suggest, I think, at this moment that it is – uh, enough of an aggressive interview and it's going uh, already into places he maybe doesn't want to go. Just before this, we saw his chin lift up to show a, a sense of not really arrogance, but being up for the fight. We saw him push his tongue around a certain subject before this, where he was putting a bind around it. I think he doesn't, he already doesn't like where this is going. I'll leave it there. And one Excellent. quick note on the alpha behavior, and especially Obama's alpha behavior. As far as behavior goes, just behavior, he was one of the coolest nonverbal communicative presidents we've ever had. And if there's one guy that's hard to outdo in that arena is Jerry Seinfeld. And him and Jerry get on a show together called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Jerry drives to the White House, and you can still see it. Obama's still owning the room, so to speak. And I think that Joe has learned to emulate a lot of those behaviors over his, his time in office with Obama. When I, when I teach people body language of alphas, I always say alphas don't strut. Their competitors do. And that's a, Obama is a perfect example of that that yeah. he's just doing his thing and doesn't worry about what anyone else is doing. Okay. Before we go to the next clip, here's a funny one for you guys. One of the things we constantly get, and I thought we would weigh in on during this is, are we reading each other constantly? What do you guys say? You know what I always say? I'm too busy looking to see how stupid I look. Or yeah. I'm looking down the camera. I'm staring at myself. Most of the time. <laughs> I can't <laughs> right stupid. I'm making sure my hair's open. I think uh, like too. most, I think like most of the comments we get, I, I can't stop looking into Chase's eyes. <laughs> get closer to the cameras. That's the hypnosis. You know what oh bugs me? Oh, my God. I think, it's, I think that the thing no, is about, about um, the girls is I think he gets too much attention. Scott, how much does that cost you, man? And can I, where can I order one? I'm going to sell this on eBay. <laughs> Does it say, Chase, what do you got on the back? No, it's just another picture of you so I can look at Oh, you. my God. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, as we all know, you were thinking long and hard yourself uh, about running for the presidency, and you decided it was a no-go. And you've said you regret it every day. Yeah. Tell me well, why. Well, in response to a question, I, I did say that, look, I made the absolute right decision for my family. But do you regret and it? I I mean, made, well, well, what, I re, what I regret is, and I'm still going to be able to do it, is I care deeply about these issues. I've spent my whole adult life, and I was 29 years old, working on foreign policy and domestic policy, and I care deeply about it. And so... I regret, to the extent I regret not having a louder voice on it, but we're, I'm the Vice President of the United States. We're another year in office, and we have an opportunity to get a lot more done. We've done a great deal, notwithstanding the fiction on the other side. We've done a great deal. We've taken this country from chaos to recovery. We're on the verge of resurgence. We genuinely are better positioned than any nation in the world, economically and politically. And so there's so much we can do. 
And the opportunities we have in life sciences and the opportunities we have in the breakthroughs that are going to occur in the next four to six years are astounding. Let me ask you. All right, Chase, what do you got? Uh, so we have another thing here that, uh, with eye movement that we're going to see is personal story recall. When he's thinking of an actual personal story that happened to him, we see an upward head and eye movement together. So skull, eyes moving together in unison, which is great. See another use of his tagline word of look when he starts to answer stuff, which I will say there is an app through Google, I don't know what it's called, where you can look at the presence of words that start sentences, especially on media. This is a huge thing. Don Lemon on CNN, Sean Hannity on Fox News, they all started doing this within the last three or four years where they want to sound like they're making a really good point. So they'll start it with, look, and then they'll start talking. But he is a visual speaker, even though he's using the word look, he still is a visual guy, and that does speak to his visual nature. One thing, we see a little Freudian slip here. Instead of the word friction on the other side, he says the word fiction on the other side. And we see him using his left hand to gesture towards the Republican Party or, or the other side when he's saying fiction on the other side. And right after that, we see his right hand move when he's saying We've taken this country from chaos to recovery. And then he's going with his right hand, using that right hand again. We're going to see this many times throughout this interview. Anything negative is going to be over here with his left hand. And again, this interviewer, I don't think Biden gets to complete any of his answers here. He's getting interrupted. He doesn't even get halfway through any of his answers before she goes, okay, but, and then just, just starts talking at him. And just asking a whole new question, uh, which I think is a horrible technique here. And it, like Scott says, it's just borderline rude, if not mm -hmm. fully rude. Mark, yeah. what do you got? Yeah, so here's what I think he starts to do in order to control that interviewer is when he gets onto a set piece, he goes symmetrical. He does what we might call squeezing the melon. So he kind of holds this kind of ball or melon I love, I love that uh, description. Yeah, squeezing, squeezing that melon. And that's a way to create what I would call a moderator, which says, I've got the ball now. I've got the melon. I'm holding this big, heavy object here. You aren't going to interrupt me. However, she does interrupt, and then he goes back to this self-soothing mechanism that he's got mm -hmm. going on, which is why I might say, I think this is a baseline for him around self-soothing, but it is a baseline around their stress in this conversation. So in debates, for example, I would be looking out for this to start happening because I'd be thinking now maybe he's under a little bit of stress and concern around this. Squeezing the melon, that's training. That's, that's somebody has said to him, you know what, uh, open palm gestures, uh, get them symmetrical uh, because that's going to be calm and assertive and it will hold the conversation. Um, so, so what's interesting here for me as a baseline is though he's had training at this point, he's not very good at holding on to it. I would say, under stress and pressure. And he's going back to those self-soothing adapters under stress and pressure. That's a bit of a red flag for me in terms of how do I think he's going to perform under stress and pressure of debates? There's my take on it. Hey, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so a couple of things. I, I really think he meant fiction in this case, Chase, because I think he's saying they made this up. You know, there's a lot of attacks from the left. That's what, I mean, from the right. That's what I think he's actually saying. He does what I call sacred space, the thing you're talking about milling his hands, often when he hits emotion. What you're calling home here, I think is home only in this interview because I've watched some other interviews with him. And the home here, that's emotion. I, of all the eye movement stuff that people will tell you and they'll try to give you absolutes, the only one I ever think is very solid is when you feel emotion, you look down into your right. That's humans. That's just how we're wired. And some of these topics are very emotional for him as he gets into the conversation. She's also talked to him about Bo a little bit in this conversation, I believe. So you've moved him into the emotional. But when he gets emotional, he does close his hands and he does middle and he does relax. When he's on message, to your point, Mark, where you call it 
compressing or holding the melon, the melon, squeezing the melon, whether you call it that or accordion or whatever he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, Trump is more the accordion. Yeah, Trump is the accordion because he's playing the polka while he's doing yeah, yeah. it. Or, or what I've coined as monkey symbols. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Monkey symbols is a good one. So, but he, what he's doing is, this is a guy who has been on message his whole life. You know, he's had to be in front of people. People ask me who lies the most. I say politicians, they have to keep enough people happy, the right people happy to keep them in office. So they have to be able to nuance the truth when they're talking. Not saying he's lying, not at all. I'm saying when he's on message, his hands, his body, his face, his words are all working together. And if you look, it's a congruent message. And the other thing he's doing is I call it, I usually call it the plaintiff whale or the, or the Biden wine. When he gets to where he's trying to convince you and he's frustrated, he gets more whiny in his voice. And it's an approach he takes as he's drawing you in to listen to him. He's changing the tone of his voice. Overall, I think he's all together illustrating effectively with his hands when he's doing that, the melon or the accordion or the or whatever you want to call it. And he's effectively delivering a message. She cuts him off anyway, back to emotion, closes, puts his hands together. That's what I have. Yeah. Scott, what you got? I'm seeing him. This is he's slowly getting geared up. So he, because he's starting to come forward a little bit, his gestures are getting a little bit bigger. His illustrators are getting getting larger. And again, his his voice is changing. Greg, I'll go with you on that as well. So he's beginning to change and get more as. And I think he's getting frustrated with her talking to him the way she is because she's loud and he's he's right there. I know she's got to be loud because it's TV and all that. But at the same time, I think she's starting to get on his nerves a little bit because she's interrupting him. He's trying to, to finish stuff, but he, but you know what? This shows what a good listener he is because she starts and he's click and just waits like, and that's another thing about Alpha is like, that's, he's doing the same thing that, you know, that's Alpha behavior. As soon as they start, you just wait and dead eye him and he's doing that. So yeah, he, he's great at this. I think he's really good at it. Staying calm, even though he's feeling, I think a lot of the emotion we're seeing is coming from him being frustrated. So, I think that's when you hear the voice, you know, starting yep. to change is when he gets frustrated. Yeah. You hear it in every interview where he gets frustrated. Yeah. Uh, as we all know, you were thinking long and hard yourself uh, about running for the presidency, and you decided it was a no-go. And you've said you regret it every day. Yeah. Tell me Well, why. in response to a question, I, I did say that, look, I made the absolute right decision for my family. But do you regret and it? I I mean, what, 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 I re, what I regret is, and I'm still going to be able to do it, is I care deeply about these issues. I've spent my whole adult life, and I was 29 years old, working on foreign policy and domestic policy, and I care deeply about it. And so I regret, to the extent I regret not having a louder voice on it, but we're, I'm the vice president of the United States. We're another year in office, and we have an opportunity to get a lot more done. We've done a great deal, notwithstanding the fiction on the other side. We've done a great deal. We've taken this country from chaos to recovery. We're on the verge of resurgence. We genuinely are better positioned than any nation in the world, economically and politically. And so there's so much we can do. And the opportunities we have in life sciences and the opportunities we have in the breakthroughs that are going to occur in the next four to six years are astounding. Let me ask you. Okay, we're good. Let me ask you about the race. Yeah. That you're not in. Yep. <laughs> uh, and now we see that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are actually running neck and neck in Iowa and in New Hampshire. Why do you think Hillary Clinton is struggling? Well, first of all, I, I've been of the view, and I don't know that you and I talked about it. I, I don't want to say that for certain, but we may have. I thought for the last six months they were neck and neck in both places. Mm -hmm. I never bought the idea that there was somehow that, re, re, remember when he was up by 15 points in New Hampshire and he was down by 15 points? That's, that's not the way this process works, as you and I both know. I'm much older than you, but you've covered a lot of this. Uh -huh. and, uh, um, and so I'm not surprised that it is viewed as neck and neck, but I'm also will be surprised if, if, if the pundits turn out to be right. They're hardly ever are in Iowa, New Hampshire. So I, I, I'm, I'm not. But why is she? So here's what I got out of this one. When she starts and she says, so, you know, the race, you're, the, let's talk about the race. And then when she says the race, you're not in. The first part makes him smile. So that's a real smile. I believe that's a Duchesne smile. The second part where he, we see him force that extra smile because it's 
on his last nerve and sort of embarrassing for him, I think, because maybe he, he had said he wanted to, to wish he'd con he continued. And we'll notice as when he smiles, the big smile then comes down to the other one, when she starts talking about Hillary and Bernie, when she gets to that next subject, you'll see that smile go away way too quickly. Now, when having grown up with a blind person, uh, though I told you about uh, my dad's BFF, Doc Watson, I noticed a lot of times when he was really thought something was funny, his smile would stay when we tell when I knew my joke would hit good because his smile would stay and it would slowly go away. When he was trying to be nice to someone, nobody ever said to him, Hey man, you got to keep that smile going because, because he would smile and then it'd be gone. And it, and it was, it's odd behavior. And that's what that reminded me of when I, when I saw that, because which suggests to know indicates he's, he's, sees these other two as competition, which they were and which he did. And they were all talking about each other and all that. So he had to be um, a man and not be bad mouthing him, but be cool about it as, as he goes forward talking about him. And I'm sure that's tough. So I think that's why the smile went away. Cause he's thinking in there, Jesus, here it comes. Now I got to say something without getting up, you know, without getting after him or saying something bad about him. And again, he's staying very calm during all this. So I thought that was really cool. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot on this one. When he, when he starts to look, if you'll notice when he usually does the smile that he uses to control something, it's the other side of his face where it starts. In this case, it starts on the right and then spreads across his face. So I think you're right. There's probably either a nervous or some kind of a natural smile that comes up and then he remembers, oh yeah, hey, because that's kind of his trademark because he's got strength in it. The other thing he does as Politician 101 is he starts by shuffling and filling a lot of words that really have no meaning. Now look, about about I've said many times, that's just filler. So it gives him time to shuffle, get ready to move to the next step. And you can use that in your life. Lots of great speakers have filler words. If you consider last Tuesday to be an important day in your life, then well, I didn't say anything. And they have filler words that have no meaning. The other thing he does that I think is artful is he almost calls Gloria Borger old. And then he suddenly realizes it and goes, oh, I'm a lot older than you, but you've been at this a while. And I think he realizes and he's graceful in backing out. If you watch, you'll also see the hand. You'll see Chase Shirty brought it up. He gestures positively with his right, negatively with his left. And you can see that working here, but not a whole lot other than that. Pay attention to the smile. I think his patented smile starts on the left. His genuine stuff starts on the right, and he adjusts quickly. And I think it's a little bit of a nervous smile and a little snarky when he does the kind of weird look at her. Yeah. Chase, what do you got? Uh, when she says the race that you're not in, one thing in addition to that smile that kind of starts on the left side of his face is eye blocking. We see a, we see a rapid increase in blink rate to where he's not really making any eye contact. That rapid increase in blink rate is not a stress indicator as if it were going up in response to a subject. That is more of an eye blocking behavior than a stress blink rate gradual increase from a stressful subject. Right when Bernie Sanders and Clinton are mentioned, we see a hallmark classic digital flexion. His, his fingers in his lap, you see everything kind of squeeze up and clench up there, which is a great indicator. And one of the things I always teach is, I, I wish I could cite the source, but it's not me. But the further a body part is from the head, the harder it is to control during anxiety. Desmond Morris. That's Desmond Morris. Desmond Morris. Thank you. And we see more GHT up by 15 points. He's using his right, right. hand much and he's just left. And he does something which we call, which I call digital extension, where his, where his fingers come out, but they come out all the way into this gesture as he's doing this to the interviewer, which is what I refer to as a stop gesture. So if you're trying to talk anyone out of doing something, even if your hands are down at your side, your fingers will extend as you're trying to talk someone out of something. So he's saying like, don't attack me because I, I made this mistake. I'm going to fix it real quick. And he can get some more time. And right afterwards, we see his uh, little hygienic gesture. He does the stop. He's adjust, adjusting his tie. And when I say hygienic gesture, just any behavior designed to improve physical appearance, adjusting your clothing, picking lint off the clothes, licking your lips, adjusting your hair, that kind of stuff. And it follows with some eye contact avoidance, which I think is – unusual for that situation. Even when he's talking, he doesn't look at her. He waits a few minutes to look back at the alpha in the room, so to speak, this interviewer. And yet again, Biden gets interrupted. Holy moly. His expression, a facial expression disappears. 
And it shows us this could be false. True facial expressions, this is the work of uh, Dr. Paul Ekman. True facial expressions will fade off of the face and false ones will usually disappear, just like Scott was saying. And finally, when she interrupts, his hands are up here, he's, he's speaking confidently and she interrupts him. And right when he gets interrupted, his hands fall to his lap and surrender. They just drop. They drop into his lap because he's getting interrupted again. This is a, 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 a very bad interview. Interviewer, I will say. You guys are winning no friends at CNN. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so here's what I think is the, is the premise of the question is why is Hillary Clinton struggling? So what he's trying to do is avoid answering that premise that there's a struggle involved. That's what he's trying to stay away from. I believe what we see there is, is not just, a, a, as you say, Chase, they're a hygienic gesture. He goes, or as I'd say, hygienic gesture. Uh, but he goes into uh, both of us, so first of all, he, he avoids that whole premise by saying, I discount the premise due to the media not really having the right figures. He then says, look, I've been around a long time. You're very experienced. So he tries to level them out at that point. Then I believe he goes here for the tie and does a little pull down or a dust down because that's a signal of status to go, I'm, I now own this. And I think, Chase, we've seen that before with his jacket pull. Yeah. That he, that he does. So, so I'm going kind of, to baseline from this, that when he wants to show us he's in charge, he's going to go for around about the sternum belly area and do some kind of adaption there, possibly. I'd probably like to see a bit more data to prove that assumption of mine, but, but I'm, I'm hedging my bets on that, that it's his way of going, I'm in charge. Um, I mean, one of the things about the tie is that we maybe don't understand now is that ties uh, are made from one piece, one piece of Italian silk. And therefore, they're super expensive to make. And one of the reasons people traditionally went for the tie is to go, look how expensive I am. Look at all the authority, the power I must have. Let me flaunt my tie in front of you. And now it's, it's shown into, I mean, often we see people display the insides of their jacket. That is, the inside of my jacket actually is Italian silk. So it's to display you know, look at the power that I have. This will have cost me a lot of money. Uh, you should pay some attention to me. Because I think he is under stress here, and, he, and he, he is being railroaded somewhat by this uh, interviewer. Uh, maybe we'll find out a little bit m later what she's actually trying to get him to talk about here. Let me ask you about the race yeah. that you're not in. Yep. <laughs> uh, and now we see that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are actually running neck and neck in Iowa and in New Hampshire. Why do you think Hillary Clinton is struggling? Well, first of all, I, I've been of the view, and I don't know that you and I talked about it. I, I don't want to say that for certain, but we may have. I thought for the last six months they were neck and neck in both places. Mm -hmm. I never bought the idea that there was somehow that, re re remember when he was up by 15 points in New Hampshire and he was down by 15 points? That's, that's not the way this process works, as you and I both know. I'm much older than you, but you've covered a lot of this. Uh -huh. and, uh, um, and so I'm not surprised that it is viewed as neck and neck, but I'm also will be surprised if, if, if the pundits turn out to be right. They're hardly ever are in Iowa, New Hampshire. So I, I, I'm, I'm not... But why is she... Okay, we're good? I'm, I'm not... But why is she struggling? I mean, you, I, you say, I mean, we considered she was an overwhelming favorite. And, well, but, I, but I, I think that's part of the reason. He's a democratic socialist. Yeah, but if you... I mean, you know, if Bernie Sanders never said he was a democratic socialist, Based on what he's saying, people wouldn't be calling him a democratic socialist. That's how he characterizes himself in sort of European terms, the democratic socialist parties in, in Europe. But, but why is she but, having trouble? Well, I, I think that, that Bernie is speaking to a yearning that is deep and real, and he has credibility on it. And that is the absolute 
enormous concentration of wealth in a small group of people with the middle class now being able to be shown being left out. There used to be a basic bargain. If you contributed to the profitability of an enterprise, you got to share in the profit. That's been broken. Productivity's up. Wages are stagnant. Talking. All right. Well, at the top of this, you can see when she says uh, why she's struggling. She gets to the part where she says he's a democratic socialist. That's when we see a, the jut, the chin jut. And his chin go back and a little bit of the tongue coming out because he's doing the on the inside of his bottom lip there. And that suggests, it denotes that he's not, not only not into it, makes him a little bit angry. So as is as coming, as coming forward with it. And then uh, he begins preening, you know, like pulling on the side of his pants. When you, when you're, you want to really get on someone's nerves and you, and you're talking to them, they're telling you something, you start this. That's, that is such a big disrespect number. And I don't know if he's pulling on his pants as a disrespectful thing that he's trying to, keep it all in or if he's doing that again out of uh, using it as an adapter. So it's one of those things that I'm not really sure which, but I'm sure it, it but I get the vibe. It's, it's, it's more of a preening issue there. And then all these, these um, everything we're seeing all together in this situation, all these tight, quick little things in that one spot tell you that he's, or denotes that he's uncomfortable indicates he's uncomfortable. And I think he's, he's not fed up with her yet, but I think she's on his last nerve because she's just keeps jumping in and, and, and won't, won't let him answer. Well, and, and then she'll, he'll start to answer and she'll jump back in and say something else. So I don't know if she's trying to, to mess with her or what's going on, but it's, it's just the, like Jay, you said, Chase this is the worst way uh, to do an interview. So what do you got, Greg? Yeah. So here he starts to show why he is a career politician and been successful. His regulators, meaning how you control the conversation, start to pick up now. He has been sitting there and listening to her run over him. He starts using his hand. He points at her with his finger. That's a control mechanism, and he starts to put her on notice. Whether she consciously knows it or not, he's putting her on notice. Then he kind of does kind of a snarky smile. When I see the anger around branding, I mean the anger around the, the Democratic Socialist, I think what he's really angry about, Scott, is that Bernie figured out how to brand himself in a way that gave him real credibility with people. I think that's where the emotion is. Because if you notice, he kind of has a little crooked smile when he says, only because he calls himself that, had people associated him with that. But his regulators start to be controlling. You see him moving his face and engaging her in a big way. His brow is there. He even leans in close to her. So he's allowing himself the opportunity to talk. And I think there's a lot of regulator that comes out of here. One quick thought, you know, he does a lot of this. Scott, where, I mean, Scott, Chase, where have you seen that? Snatching your coat down. That's a very military thing. Oh, yeah. If you want to demonstrate authority and you're around, if you're around Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Air Force officers all the time and they're snapping their coat, that's an authority thing. And I think that's some of why he does it when he's getting on the ropes or he's trying to control. So I think you're seeing him broadcasting that he wants space, taking that space and starting to do this and saying, look, Bernie do is not doing anything anybody else hasn't done. When he starts to talk about Bernie has found a space that nobody is talking to, his eyes drift down to the right again, back to that emotional space. I think probably what, what he's thinking there, this is me guessing, is, hey, this guy's got a thing that we didn't figure out and he's, got a, he's running with it. That's my opinion. All right. So, Chase, what you got? I get to say it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, surprise, he gets interrupted a few more times. And there's discomfort with the topic. I think uh, his pulling of the pants is less of a broadcast, a desired attempt to broadcast. I think it is what Scott said. I, I do think it is kind of a pacifier or some kind of a what Greg would call an adapter. And when he's saying the Democratic Socialist Party, we see a huge increase in blink rate, almost to the point of what some behavioral people would call an eye flutter, which may or may not classify as eye blocking behavior here. He uses positive GHT side to discuss the small populace of the rich. He uses his, his right hand to discuss the rich. He doesn't kind of lean over and say there's this small populace. You can still use the right hand. But if you're going to something negative, you, you might lean over here if that's your negative side. See, people do that all the time. This is not just debate profiling prep. This is not just Biden baseline. You can use this every day. 
I think Biden likes to lean in when he knows he's got a real good point and he's excited that he has a very coherent message. And this is just like when Trump does this big uh, nasal inhale, when he goes, before he starts saying something, he knows he's, he's going to win everybody over. Biden does the, the lean in. And I think he's also doing that to prevent her from interrupting him again. Well, she does again at the end of this. And I think he leans in because he knows he's got a good point. He's reasserting his control over the conversation. And he, at the very end here, we see him get un- interrupted once again. Mark? Yeah, so here's where this has been leading, is that uh, you can't even beat, the, or, or, or she, she can't even beat a democratic socialist, which, you know, my assumption would be in, in the US, you know, if you can't beat a Democrat, an old school European democratic socialist, like what's, what's going on here? The interviewer here has got him in a real bind. And this is where she's been leading, I believe, all the way, which is, and, and we see it the second um, time she says she, she goes, why is she... So she does the stress on the S and then does three E's afterwards. She's trying to tell him, look, what I want you to talk about here is is gender and character. So essentially she's lulling him. She's trying to bring him into, which is really, you know, was, was Trump's idea, which is that woman. The problem is the woman and specifically that woman. Now, he doesn't want to go anywhere near this. And that's why I think he does that, that, that self-soothing gesture on the trousers, on his pants, at the side, because this is now a real problem for him. Um, and we do get that lean in, and he comes right down the center of his wheel plane there, so right down the center to go, I've really got my thoughts together on this. I'm leaning in. Something we see more from Trump, these days, the, a consistent lean in all the time on the interviewer, because at this point, he's going to totally moderate this and control this because it's, it's out of hand. She's now pushed him into an area he doesn't want to go, which is to throw his colleague under the bus based on being female and a specific type of character of female. He's decided he's not going there. That's what I'd say about it. I'm, I'm not. Why is she struggling? I mean, you, I, you say, I mean, we consider she was an overwhelming favorite. And, well, but, I, but I, I think that's part of the reason. He's a democratic socialist. Yeah, but if you, I mean, you know, if Bernie Sanders never said he was a democratic socialist, based on what he's saying, people wouldn't be calling him a democratic socialist. That's how he characterizes himself in sort of European terms, the democratic socialist parties in, in Europe. But, but why is she but, having trouble? Well, I, I think that, that Bernie is speaking to a yearning that is deep and real, and he has credibility on it. And that is the absolute enormous concentration of wealth in a small group of people with the middle class now being able to be shown being left out. There used to be a basic bargain. If you contributed to the profitability of an enterprise, you got to share in the profit. That's been broken. Productivity's up. Wages are stagnant. Talking. All right, so is, uh, is everybody good? Yeah. Wages are but Hillary's stagnant. Hillary's talking about that as well. Well, it's, but it's, it's, it's relatively new for Hillary to talk about that. Hillary's focus has been on other things up to now, and that's been Bernie's. Uh, no one questions Bernie's authenticity on those issues. And they question so, hers, you said? Well, I, I think they question everybody's who hasn't been talking about it all along. But I think she's come forward with some really, really thoughtful approaches to deal with the issue. But I, I just think, and look, you know, everybody, you know, it's the old thing. No one, everybody wants to be the favorite. No one wants to be the prohibitive favorite. Mm-hmm. And so it's an awful high bar for her to meet that she was the absolute prohibitive favorite. I never thought she was a prohibitive favorite. I don't think she ever thought she was a prohibitive fa- favorite. So I think it's, I think it's, you know, everything's sort of coming down to earth, just settling in. But so, it's not over. So. All right, Chase, what do you got? I'll just pick on a couple things here. When he says Hillary's been focused on other things, 
He's moving that off to his left side. And when he says she's been focused on his, like how his character is uncorruptible and how nobody can question him, as he's saying she's been focused on, she goes by, uh, we see Biden do this. And Biden's saying nobody can question him. So he's saying Hillary's been focused on other things, but mainly, you know, there's a focus on and is pointing to, towards himself as he's saying that nobody can really question it, which I thought was really interesting. And at the end here, he's using look again to illustrate a point, which may become a little bit repetitive. And uh, if the clip was not trimmed to this, if you're watching this YouTube video, guess what happens at the end after this clip? Biden gets interrupted again. I'll leave it to uh, Scott. What do you got? Yeah. Here we seem, I think he's starting, this is where she's, she's already on his last nerve. She's there. And he's starting to get fired up. He's, he's controlling his, his, what would be a little bit of anger. Because uh, apparently, because Greg said that he knew this girl, that, that uh, Biden, she and Biden were, were friends earlier or something. <laughs> and then, uh, so maybe she's trying to, maybe he's trying to, to hold his, his anger or something or being frustrated in. So I, I just see, I just see him this, this finally come, this finally come out. I know y'all got different ones. Everybody wants to cover a different thing on this. So I'm not going to hog it all, but that's what I'm seeing. He's built up to this point to where he's, he, it's finally coming out a little bit, I think. So that, that's what we're seeing. Mark, what about you? Yeah, I think he's now using look as a way of changing direction. It's a good segue for him. It's a good pivot, a uh, good fulcrum to, to legitimately move to something else. Uh, he puts up his hand and pushes away, just as, as Chase noticed before. It's his way, again, of moderating and saying, he says it, I think, on thoughtful approaches. Uh, he, he pushes, uh, puts up his hand and pushes away. I think he's now decided, this has got to stop. I don't want any of this anymore. I'm taking control of this. And he's going to start, I think, now on to, to try and shut this one down. Greg. Give us what you got. Yeah, so Chase, not only does he do this, when he says he's beyond reproach, roughly, whichever language he uses, he's got a lot of requests for approval or brow or resonance fishing, whatever you want to call it. He's looking with a confirming glance, but his face is all wrenched up as if he needs approval on that one. He also, when he's talking about, about um, Hillary, uh, to your point, he's moving her away as he's talking. The, the, the final piece to watch in his eye movement, you talked about home for him. Home for him in emotion is down here. But when, you, when he's calling, recalling something he's talking about, he's over on the left side of his head. Here he gets into a bind where he has to navigate what he's going to say about Bernie and about her because who's the next president? He's not sure. Who's the next nominee? He's not sure, and he's going to have to eat those words probably. You watch him go off to the right as he navigates the words. It's not, that's not a home spot for him over here as he's thinking about what to say next. In general, I think his gestures, his illustrators, all of that are open. He's pushing. He's leaning in. He's trying to regulate the conversation. I think you're right. He is past frustrated. And Gloria Berger is, you know, she's not the Trump fan. She's not the other people fan. She's just doing a job. She may not do a job the way we would do it, but she's certainly pushing hard topics and, and pushing them into a corner. And you can see some of that. And he uses those patented canned things that look. What I was surprised not to see is the big smile. You would expect the big smile. He had that kind of goofy thing is he had his forehead involved, but he didn't try to push her off with that. He used his hands. He controlled the conversation with open speaking. And I think you're starting to see a little bit of frustration here. Wages are stagnant. Hillary's talking about that as well. Well, it's, but it's, it's, it's relatively new for Hillary to talk about that. Hillary's focus has been on other things up to now, and that's been Bernie's. Uh, no one questions Bernie's authenticity on those issues. And they question so, hers, you said? Well, I, I think they question everybody's who hasn't been talking about it all along. But I think she's come forward with some really, really thoughtful approaches to deal with the issue. But I, I just think, and look, you know, everybody, you know, it's the old thing. No one... Everybody wants to be the favorite. No one wants to be the prohibitive favorite. Mm -hmm. And so it was an awful high bar for her to meet that she was the absolute prohibitive favorite. I never thought she was a prohibitive favorite. I don't think she ever thought she was a prohibitive fa favorite. So I think, it's, I think it's, you know, everything's sort of coming down to earth, just settling in. But it's so, not over. So, so now we're going to throw it around the room and see what everybody thinks about 
what we've seen up to this point and uh, give our impressions of, of in whole about what we've seen about Joe Biden's behavior. Greg, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I think if, when you see Biden on message, his hands are illustrating what he's thinking. His body is open. His head is engaging. He's making eye contact. He's using regulators, illustrators, adapters, all of that. When you push him into a point where he's uncomfortable, he closes his hands. He starts to mill, creates sacred space. And he starts to then do that patent to Joe smile, the Teflon smile that pushes people off. I think when you're watching the debates, you should expect his home to be recall, recall, recall. And then when he gets into an emotional issue where they're pushing him on something he's uncomfortable with, you'll see him looking down into the right. None of that's deceptive. None of that is wrong. That's simply him looking from a normal, open speaking pattern that he's used for 50 years to when he's pressured into a place where he has to go back internally and start thinking of answers that he's not prepared, you're going to see him scramble. And you're going to hear him do the patented things. He's going to regulate by controlling you with his head movement. He's going to push his hands forward. He may mill to block, and he's going to say, look, and flash that smile when he's feeling stress. That's Joe. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so here's what I'm going to be looking out for is I think we can say with a little more certainty now that these gestures, this gesture here and this one here is self-soothing. He's got good training to stay open, even if it is openness just of squeezing the melon there. He's got some good training there, but he easily springs back to these emotional responses here. I'll be looking out for that. If I were on his debate prep team, and believe me, if that happens, I will let everybody know. I'll let you know I'm taking a check or I'll bow out and go, I can't be part of this at the moment. I'm not. But if I were, I would be lobbying for uh, debates where they do not have a lectern or a podium, whatever you want to call it. Because if he's got somewhere to put his hands, he's more likely to go here. So certainly when I'm training people, I don't say, hey, don't do that. What I'm trying to do is set up an environment where they're just less likely to go to the behaviors which aren't going to play very well. Very hard to help human beings not to do stuff. It's easier to put them in an environment where they don't do it. So uh, without a lectern or a podium, he's more likely to stay open and less likely to go into these repose gestures. So certainly I, I would be now looking out for that as a, a signal of stress or not liking where the the debate is going. There, there's my piece on that. Uh, Chase, give us what you got. That's great. And if you're making a list of all these, this is what you want to look for for Biden's entire baseline, what to look for on the debate. And all the stuff we're saying right now, you could fit onto a note card and watch the debates with it. We could have a family game night during the debates. Who can spot what? I think that would be a great family game night. We do it at my house. <laughs> but here's what to look for. First, look for that eyebrow flash. This is when he's needing approval either from the audience, if he's looking at the audience and those eyebrows go up, or he's looking at the debate moderator and he wants a little bit more time or he wants the debate moderator to stop the other person from talking. Next, look for that GHT. Is he gesturing over here to say one thing and over here to say another? That's very important. Because if he says, I really like this person, but he's using his left hand, that's noteworthy. That is a noteworthy thing that's taking place right there. Next, what we saw just in this video and al almost every other video he's ever been in in the last 30 years, digital flexion. He's in trouble, the fingers go in. Even if his hands are at his sides, you'll see the fingers, what I call retreat towards the palm a little bit. And if you want someone to stop talking, you'll see the hands go all the way out into a stop gesture, even if his hands are at his side. So take a look at, uh, during the debates for that behavior. And finally, when does he adjust his clothes? And when do all these behaviors happen? Not just, okay, I spotted someone doing something. That's meaningless unless we understand this was being spoken about and then we saw this behavior in response. And that is what's going to make you a, a champion debate profiler. And I'll pass it over to Scott. All right, great. So well, since everybody's covered everything, I'll just talk about his behavior when he's confident. Everything seems to be small when he's, when he's talking about things. But when he starts becoming upset, he, he gets a little bit out of shape. 
he's things start to get bigger. So I think when, when, as the stress builds, as he's during the debate, one thing to watch out for is his, uh, he'll be turning more toward that person, I think, and his, his uh, illustrators and gestures will get larger as we see him, as we see him go along. So the larger watermelon is what you're, oh, you're geez, yeah. the watermelon gets a little bigger. Giant pumpkin. Yes. Yes, big pumpkin. So, and he'll and and that's when he was really getting a uh, bit out of shape. That's when the his gestures and, and illustrators were coming forward. So almost as an attack mode, like like sort of like what Greg was talking about earlier. So that's that's all I've got there on the end one. So are we good up to that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just all looking right. forward to the to the the bingo card, the lotto card. I'm we looking forward to the eBay thing. I don't know who's going to get this. I don't know who's going to get it. Hey there, Mark here. Thanks for watching and to watch more videos, click and make sure you subscribe.